What are they about to do? What are they about to do? I'm about to ring the bell. What does that mean? What does ringing the bell mean? Well, we live and die by the bell. The bell goes and we move like sheep. It's like bell, 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 bell. Food. We wake up. Bell. What time? Wake up. Bell. What time do we? What time do we wake up every day to the bell? What time? Uh, but who cares about time anymore? There's no time. There's three, just three bells. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> bell! It's a lot harder than it looks. Bell! My name is Randy Brown. I'm the executive director of Clean Islands International, and I serve as the administrator for Veers. My name is Jamie Irving, and I'm the operations manager here at Veers. My name is Camilla Christensen, and I did mycid shrimp concentration. My name is Dr. Paul Bologna, and my title is Grand Emperor of the Galactic Empire. My name is Leslie Dempsey Marquez. I'm a student at Montclair, and uh, we're here at Veers to um, look at urchins and mice and relationships. Veers is the Virgin Islands Environmental Resource Station. And fundamentally, it's one part eco-resort, one mm -hmm. part research lab. I made the contacts with Randy Brown, who's the director of Veers, and he was able to set up basically a group of students coming down. Um, the first couple of times I came down were really sort of look-see adventures to being able to go through and just experience the different marine habitats, uh, snorkel, kayak, sail, all of those different kinds of things. And it's progressed beyond there to bringing the students down, not only to sort of see the site, but to engage them in, in meaningful work and research and all these different kinds of activities. Because to me, as a biologist, that's one of the critical skills. And it's a great place because you have access within, you know, a hundred yards of uh, waking up in the morning to walk down and actually get into the water and see amazing things. And so that's one of the main things that attracted me to this place. One of my visions, you know, in my tenure here is to actually have it so when someone walks up the driveway, when they enter this camp area, from that moment on, everything they see serves as a, serves a purpose but it also serves um, as an educational tool as well. It deepens your understanding of um, the relationship or, or the information, and you really can, I think, bring it home with you and remember it. It makes you more passionate about what you study. Like, there's nothing that compares to being out like, in the field and in the lab and actually seeing it and working with it and understanding. Because you can sit home and read studies and different experiments that are done, but you'll never really understand it until you actually do it. Kim and I were measuring um, the diameter of um, the diadema when we first got here, and we were like, okay, we, we can snorkel, but how many, how often have I snorkeled down and held my breath for 30 seconds? <laughs> and we had to go down 10 feet. We, Kim and I just couldn't, we couldn't do it. It went down and down, and we go, we only got 30, we can't, we can't measure anymore. And we had to get 300 in each bay, you know? We didn't know how to snorkel, so me and Leslie are trying to like all of a sudden dive under the water and we can't figure out how to make ourselves stay down there and we're slowly floating to the top. And so that was the first day. The second day wasn't any better, you know. And finally, after the, se after the end of the second day, we realized, oh yeah, we could do this and, and we, we got it. It was, it was hard in the field, but it, it was fun. This is it. Extreme Sports 101. a very good experience. I love it. I learned a lot while I was here. I remember, the f yeah, the f about the first year I was here, almost every night I'd be down swimming in Little Lambshire around five o'clock. And you just, you know, you're watching the sun go down you know, over basically an, an untouched watershed. You know, the whole south side of Bordeaux and all these hills here, there's not a house among it, you know. So it's, it's really, really amazing to be able to look back and be like, I, you know, I'm sitting, living here. You know, this is really amazing.
And because of the remoteness, you really make this place just tremendously pristine. It's a national park, um, it's a coral reef national monument, it's a biosphere reserve. So you have all of these levels of protection, both nationally and internationally, for the biodiversity of the plants and animals that are here. So our greatest success is that you're comfortable, you don't really need to do anything else but be here and sit in these green chairs and relax. <laughs> but it's a real hands-on experience, and that's what's really needed in order to, to teach. Um, so, whereas some eco-resorts may um, tout their, their sustainable practices, you know, to attract that kind of, that audience, that clientele, we do it out of, um, A, necessity, because it, it does work financially for us, but B, because of our obligation to help educate the community. This year, the students are, again, focusing on, on diadema, um, it's an abundant organism here, and so it's really easy to work with. But they've taken a slight different bent on it. They're looking at the um, relationships of the different types of organisms. In particular, these very small shrimp called mycid shrimp that live within the spines, they school around. So they're looking at behavior, they're looking at relationships of, of them out into the field, mm -hmm. as well as fish and other kinds of organisms that are associated with the diadema. And so it's, it's fun to kind of continue to build on previous year's work and, and, and get good research out of it. I think the powder's expired.